Years later is a series where I take a look back on past pop culture and cinema and see if films that are 10 or more years older still hold up. This episode is Raiders of the Lost Ark and it was released on June 12, 1981. So, what year is it? Whoa, what? Oh, May, Thursday. What year? No, what? Year is it? Oh, now I'm gonna do something a little bit more different with this years later. I'm gonna do a different format. Not only will I be talking about Raiders of the Lost Ark, but I will be talking about its sequels because there's only three Temple of the Doom, Last Crusade, and Kingdom of Skull Island or something like that. So I'm gonna do this format. I'm gonna change it up a bit because I'm a bit bored. And I'm only gonna do this format if there's only like five movies in a franchise. That's it. I don't know why. Five is like the perfect number. Except for horror. I wanna save those for 31 days. Currently, right now, as of recording this, there's only four films. There's about to be a fifth one coming out next year, Indiana 5, untitled. So something different. I want to do so Raiders of the Lost Ark. For nearly 3,000 years, man has searched for the lost Ark of the Covenant. Do you realize what the Ark is? Then it is something that man was not meant to disturb. <laughs> It's a very simple movie. In terms of its narrative, you got a professor working at a university. He likes going on adventures. He wants to find his golden statue, but it gets taken away. And then his next goal is to find this Ark of the Covenant. It has secrets to it that can give people like either powers or something. Like there's this mystery surrounding this Ark. And that's a great sort of aspect to this film. Archaeologists and people, they want to find this certain object that's like a myth. And maybe once you find it, maybe you'll be disappointed or you'll die by the end. Who knows? But it's an adventure and mystery to find whatever this item is, this Ark of Covenant, and to see it to come fruition, to see if it's true or not. Is already hooking me, thought it could be invested. Indiana Jones himself, played by Harrison Ford, really works. He just has the look, the acting chops, and the charisma to be this teacher at a university, kind of being like, all right, I want to go on an adventure. I'm gonna be more than just a teacher. I want to find the best of things, put them at a museum. He's not really this like almighty character at all. He's a relatable, just normal character. And the opening of the film already like opens up, making you intrigued. Like the opening, the whole rock boulder thing, and getting the statue and placing it. I've already seen in other things like Family Guy and probably somewhere else. Like there's been parodies of it, so I was like, I'm expecting this but it was still cool to see the original sort of foundation of this golden statue and big boulder there's even like a resident evil game i think the first one right the remake there's like this big boulder running towards you came off of indiana jones this movie and it's just cool to see things that is like hey i get that reference style and then there's also that guy that gets killed by traps and whatnot now this film really wants to be like rated r but it's also not and that's a good thing they show you things that aren't necessarily rated r but do it in a way that's really clever like show that guy's other than all the blood coming out you see a shadow of someone being shot but it's just a shadow at that bar scene where you marry in like stuff like that and then the ending of the covenant all like the so-called i think spirits is coming out melting people's face <laughs> This really good practical effect. This movie probably should be rated R, but it works the way that it is. And then Mirren herself, she's a very capable and badass character as well. She's able to hold on her own. She doesn't feel like the damsel in distress. And there's also like pretty good set pieces. The whole basket set piece of carrying Mirren in a basket case, the last and very lengthy kind of meandering, but long chase sequence. That was really good as well. And there's really good humor placed throughout. When those guys are coming out with those swords and he just has a gun, he just shoots them. Why would you bring a sword to a gunfight? And then the villain, Belloc, but I really, what brings the movie down is the villain. I mean, he just can't is there. He wears a suit or something. I forgot what he wears, but he just, I don't know. He's just there. Like, he's there to be the opposite of Indy. Like, he's the evil one who believes that this Ark, again, building more on the Ark of the Covenant, thinks that he'd be very powerful of this Ark. And there's, like, different myths. And that's what makes it interesting with this adventure and movie. Indy and Marion are on this adventure, but they don't know whether Covenant is good or not. But there's other people who believe other myths. And they're like, no, it will bring me joy or just money or something like that. And all the different myths are just myths at the end of the day. Like, these people are chasing something that they'll never ever get. It is meaningless by the end of the day. And you want to do something good. These other characters that really want it for money or power, or they want to do something dirty or battle, and they're chasing very impossible item and goal. Kind of ironic. And there's Andy's very iconic whip and the whip sound. I mean, once he got that whip out, I was like, oh yeah, this is gonna be his signature look. Like with the hat and the shirt and everything, and then that whip just whipping. I was like, okay, yeah, this is very clearly gonna be a signature thing to him. And another sort of thing about Andy is his fear of snake. Why? I don't think we need to find out why, even in the later film. Do we find out why? I may have missed it because there is one that's really boring, but his fear of snake always come back bite him in his ass all the time spring of humor throughout there's just funny badger between the two with Marin spring throughout the film the little breathe and then go to the next set piece or just looking for stuff that is like some of them is a lot of looking and searching which i can give or take honestly like there's a lot of that it's like all right you know you can only look for so long and make it interesting and then when every character gets to the ark of the covenant it is not 
what it's supposed to be it's very powerful it will melt your face all the people that want it for greedy they melt their faces again looks fantastic probably did like a stop motion thing because it, it looks like stop motion and then very you know real looking prosthetics or like fake blood and milk probably there's some white blood in there and then this reveal scene is also another thing that i saw like family guy a lot of family guy stuff that i saw from raiders of the lost ark indiana jones in general that i saw but i even watched the actual film it's like oh yeah i should probably like watch the actual film but either way the arc is too powerful so they just kind of get rid of it you know what it reminds me of i wouldn't be surprised if the uncharted games were inspired by indiana jones very similar nathan drake is indiana jones looking for some myth or artifact that can help them anyway but by the end when they get to this artifact it's actually very powerful and could kill you and the bad guy that wants to regret either gets powerful and indy has to get rid of them or they die by just touching it and whatnot but not surprise me at all and it's very similar in a way i think it is it probably is but yeah very similar to that it just reminded me of that when i played those games back on the ps3 so then the ark of the covenant goes in this box and it goes to this large storage warehouse all the boxes in it and then that's how the movie ends it also ends with him and Miriam kind of walking off doing their own thing and kind of continuing their story very later on but ends with that shot of all the boxes so yeah raiders with lost ark like it's a very despite being very simplistic it's effective it doesn't need to be very complex it's an adventure story with a lot of implied imagery and blood and just violence here and there it doesn't go over the top it's fun indy meets Miriam, a lot of interesting characters and tries to survive all the traps and whatnot and has a boulder running down him and he's also a university teacher so he's doing all this while trying to balance a normal life he's no superhero or anything he's just some normal guy going on a very fun adventure while almost dying and that's kind of what readers of the lost ark and indiana jones is just a little fun adventure while trying to not die so raiders of the lost ark 40 years later still holds up and is a really fun event if adventure has a name it must be indiana jones indiana jones temple of doom and then three years later in 1984, a sequel came out, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Now the funny thing about this, I didn't realize, but it's actually like a prequel. It took a year before Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's a sequel in terms of like when it came out, but it's technically like a prequel because it takes place a year before. And this little adventure, instead of looking for a golden statue or Ark of the Covenant, he's going after the Sakara Stone. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Sakara Stone that gives people luck this time. However, there's a bit more changes because it is a sequel. Donna has sequel but it's also a prequel instead of getting this sort of stone for himself he's given it to the people of India that are poor and he also brings on a little boy named Shorty a woman who's out of her element called Willie and that just brings a very fun and just interesting dynamic to this movie because last movie he just had his girl Marion this one he has his girl Willie but also a little kid now and because of Shorty this little kid he just brings a lot of fun a lot more humorous which isn't a bad thing so there's like most of a line that this little kid says is just hilarious Andy's still being Andy still a teacher at a university teaching I don't know some bullcrap teaching something wait hold on what's major right? that doesn't matter and likewise with the first one there are a lot of bad people that want the stone that think it could bring good luck they build on more of this myth same thing with the ark of covenant with this sankara stone it gives people good luck it can make people win stuff like mainly luck is the big thing there's not these other myths but the main myth is that it could give people luck and the people of india who are on the lower side of society who are very poor they want this thing it could give them really good luck and it was stolen so indy decides to help them back up now willie could come off as a annoying character but i saw her like panicking and being out of her element as a very humor Way. she's a singer she's singing at shanghai at the beginning of the movie and throughout the movie she's put in these situations where she's completely out of her element and she doesn't know what to do she puts like perfume on this elephant's head it smells and then the elephant just takes a string and shoot water at her like she hates it there she's stepping on bugs she's touching bugs she almost gets indy and shorty killed almost in that spike scene and she hates it here but she has to be here in order to survive like i saw that as something humorous it was very hilarious same thing with shorty he adds an interesting dynamic because of him it's just a lot more funny and he even saves the day in a way he like gets indy out of the the curse or whatever near the end of the film when they're in the temple of doom and it's a very cult like sort of building or underground building in a way and then i guess like the main sort of opposite to indy is this cult like it's one guy about again completely forgot about him it's like this cult that like gives people to drink blood and all the people that are praying and bowing probably not doing it for their own will there's blood that they have to drink that indy drinks by the end and he's completely just robotic not robotic but he's a complete zombie and does anything commanded by this certain person and he almost gets really killed but again shorty comes Save the day and i'm assuming if that happens to indy all those people bowing down and put their hands up basically just kind of there because they're forced to same thing with the kids being slaves in the factory rock factory where they're all chained up have to do this because of this higher up seems that this wish stone could give them power and this one does go a bit more magical this stone is magical and so this guy's just like ripping hearts out of people and then sacrificial ritual thing is like, okay this is getting very cultish ritual like magical and then when indy sort of loses his mind we see that fear in his eye it takes a dark turn from the very mostly humorous film to a very dark turn which i think we're 
as well it could have been kind of returned i was like wait this is a very dark turn but i didn't mind it and the other things that are worth noting is the whole raft thing falling down the raft and then landing in india you know it's coincidence but it's still a lot of fun starting off the film like that and an airplane and crash down with a raft going in eating scene gross but also hilarious but you're not eating. Eating like eyeball and like brain. They were drinking brains or something. That was really, really weird and gross, but hilarious. There's that long bridge, shaky ass bridge scene where they have to hold on and everybody falls down. That was a really cool set piece. And everybody thinks Andy's insane, but both him and Shorty knows what's up. It seems like this isn't their first rodeo. It's like, yeah, I've done this way too long. And Willie's just like, you're insane. There's that hilarious, like, they're about to like get with each other. It's been cock blocked by henchmen trying to get at him. She's thinking one thing, he's thinking the other thing. She thinks that he can't see her. She's trying to like, ghost her. That's hilarious. Inside the building, that's where he goes the whole spike situation. That whole spike up and down, having to grab with the bugs in it. That was a really awesome sequence as well. And again, the big thing I noticed was just a lot of fun. I had so much fun watching this film. I don't know which one's better, but like, I think this is like a lot more fun than the first one. And because it is a prequel, we do get the whole whipping, how he even gets the whip. I think it's used three times in the beginning, middle, and end. And you see him just the whip sounding. And then they reference back the whole bringing a sword or a knife to a gunfight. He thinks he has a gun, but he actually has to fight these guys with swords and then oh yeah the whole roller coaster ride throughout the mine shaft again another sequence that i saw on family guy family guy's the reason why i even know like half of these things but willie shorty and andy are riding through this mine shaft thing and they're going through the roller coaster and i think that's it for the temple of the doom with adding shorty into the mix adding a bit more humor to the film it's a lot more fun and just slightly longer but it breathes out the whole humor stuff going to india going to bangkok palace dinner scene overall just a lot of fun i think that's a big takeaway from the second film way more fun takes this up way less seriously there are serious moments and dark moments within that temple of doom thing he's drinking the blood it takes a very dark turn but i didn't press their mind that at all it paired a contrast humorous mostly first two acts and then final act is like oh very dark turn blood drinking voodoo stuff and so yeah indiana jones and the temple of doom is a lot of fun and pretty damn good oh rats <laughs> the jones is on the quest of a lifetime one jones is not enough dad junior happens to me all the time Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. And then in 1989, I think? Yeah, 1989. The third film came out, Indiana Jones and Last Crusade. With this one, the big catch is that he's going on an adventure with his father, who's played by Sean Connery, who looks old as heck. Like, when I think of Sean Connery, I think of Bond, and seeing him this old, it's fun, but it's like, oh yeah, like, I've never seen you in anything else aside from James Bond, so it was very interesting for me to watch it, like, oh yeah, James Bond and Indiana Jones. Let's see what this film has to offer. Now, one thing I do feel clearly about this film is fatigue. So I binge watched these four films, which probably isn't the best, but I did either way. Third one feels, I felt the fatigue already. It was like, okay, rinse and repeat, retreads of like surgery for like first 45 minutes, a lot of surgery. We've seen these things before. It's not until 47 minutes in until Sean Carney shows up. I was like, cool, big green and bad to the two these two characters should get me through. And it did kind of, but it did feel a bit repetitive, the whole research in this item, which, what was the item? Oh yeah, it's the Holy Grail, whatever that means, the whole cross thing. I definitely felt it in this film. Now, I still like this film. Film. I think it's still really entertaining and good, but it's definitely like it is a Vince repeat. So we actually meet Hitler in this film. They mentioned Hitler and Nazis in the first film, and I just thought, okay, that was a cool little reference, but no, they actually show up. It takes place in 1938, right before Hitler, I don't know, starts World War or something like that, wanted to kill Jews. And he actually meets him and gets him to sign this book, which I thought was a hilarious scene. But they actually meet Hitler. I just thought that little reference back in the first film would just not come back. Turns out it would. The film also goes back in 1912 to show Andy's past, how he's always been an explorer and causing trouble, feeling this cross in the present years later meeting the same guy who's a lot older filling the same cross thinking that it should go back into the museum so that the past and present are colliding with each other sinking up and so like i said earlier the first 45 minutes it's a lot of meander like it was fine the opening of young india it was a cool sequence after that it's definitely like a lot of retreads not looking so good third film man and i already felt the whole fatigue thing this is not good but then that he meets a girl named elsa who turns out to be like a nazi i think i don't know i forgot about that but basically that portrays him but past that and he also meets his father by the time he meets his father in his room they are to start bickering and i already love it this is like the best part about this film the fathers are bigger with each other not always being on the same side but always not being on different sides always led to arguments and it's something that's relatable these two love each other they just like bickering a lot and that's kind of their relationship and like this all comes to a hit throughout the whole bickering and whatnot father died and then he has to go to the holy grail to drink this water again it's very like not dumb
done yet, but it's definitely like, okay. So in the first one, we had Covenant. Second one, we had this magic stone. I will believe this, a magic water that killed people. He gets his father back, saving his loved ones. The whole point of adding in his father in, it's a very personal story. Him and his father bonded with each other, and he's willing to do in order to save them. And when he was drinking that water, possibly could have died, but because he's like the chosen one set by this old guy in this underground. Why is this old man in this underground? Who knows? Doesn't matter. He saved his father. He has his spam because that's kind of the whole point. And since Hitler was brought up, Nazis are like the main villain with the whole Elsa chip, and they don't do much like with any other villain. They're not. I do like the fact that the love interest or whatever was with like, they betray him. But aside from that, like, I don't know. Like many other villains, not at all interesting. You know, they're just kind of there. They're there to be there, be the opposite of Indy. Oh, yeah. And then hold on. I just remember his fear of snakes came back in the very opening where he was in like the snake pit, the snake train pit. Yeah, I just remember that. That's why he's scared of snakes. And then this is where the issue was. Like, in terms of the set pieces, aside from the opening, I don't remember much. Like, that's kind of the issue. Maybe it's just on me and my badass memory, but I don't necessarily remember the set pieces. Is it the horsing? I think the one horse sequence where he has a bunch of horses, that one was decent, but nothing worth noting that's like amazing or anything. There's that one aircraft chasing them, blowing up, like, like shooting them with the missiles, a car that they're driving. What else was there? Oh, yeah, there's that tank scene. That was pretty good. That tank scene. Like, I got crushed by that tank, by the way. The other thing that's a bit of a negative is the CG. In that aircraft scene where they're up in the sky, it's literally CG. It's not the best looking. It reminds me of Sean Connery's earlier James Bond films where, you know, it was the 60s. I'll give it a pass. And it just took me out of the film. And this one was like, this is, you know, green screen. That guy's went off the cliff with that tank. Really bad looking ball. So there are quite a bit of, like, some, maybe a few CG shots that were like, yeah, this is no good. And it will continue in the fourth film. But as far as this one, not too bad that it derails film at all. It's just something I noticed. And then that's all I gotta say about The Last Crusade. It's full bonding time for a father and son between Indy and his father. Cool to see Sean Connery. Their humor spread throughout the others, done well. But with the news of CG and kind of the repetitive nature of this film, by the third film, a bit of an issue, but it's still a fun adventure. The love interest, while that's a twist, it's just like, okay, yeah, let's just have a twist for a second with a twist. Hitler signing his book was a cool moment, yeah? So Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade is just good, but it's still a fun ride-along and adventure with Indiana Jones and his father. And Whoever returns the skull to the city temple will be given control over its power. Will help us find it. Well, what's he gonna do now? I don't think he plans that far ahead. Oh! Oh! And then lastly, the last film, the fourth film, the currently it is the last film until the fifth film comes out, but Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Yeah, you know, it's just, this film boring. Right off the bat, this film is so boring. The film came out in like 2008, so it was like what, 19 years or something like that? Or is it 19? Whatever, it's been a long time since the third one, and I don't know, Steven Spielberg came back with this film? It's okay, it's very boring. I don't know, like what was the whole point of Shia LaBeouf's character? All I got out of his character is just lots of comedy. <laughs> I was like, man, this guy loves combing his hair, you know? All right, this character. And uh, I don't know. And the issue, I didn't write any notes. So I don't know if it's gonna be like a short section for the fourth film, but I write no notes. I was like, I feel lazy. I'm not gonna write notes on this. And I just, I regret it because I should have written notes. I don't remember much from this film. I'm gonna Google it right now on my phone to be like, let me go through the story beats. I forgot a lot. So Indiana Jones, he's old as heck, as old as he is in the fifth one, but he's aged probably in his late 50s, early 60s. He's still a teacher at a university teaching archaeology stuff and wanting go on adventures and whatnot and something compels him to go do an adventure again i forgot what, what was the adventure i forgot about it. all i know is that he goes to a nuke town reminds me of bo2 nuke town map and there's the infamous fridge scene where he's in the fridge because a nuke is coming ties in it he survives it and comes out of the fridge and it's another one of those moments i know because of pop culture and just references that i've seen everywhere else on media so i got that they're scrubbing the crap out of his body especially the lower half because he's like radiation poison and then this time the artifact is alien schools oh god yeah it's a blue alien Alien schools, right? The movie's weird. And like Kate Blanchett is the villain, which is kind of just comical. It's like, god damn, what are you doing here, Kate Blanchett? This is the same year that she had that film with Brad Pitt. Benjamin Button, I think. Or Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Same year as like you're doing this. Alright. She's like Russian. Russian like the big bads now. They want this thing that can control people. Cause when you look skull thing, it makes you see shit and you get crazy. And along the way, he meets his new young partner, Shia LaBeouf, who loves comb his goddamn hair. And he's a rookie, he's an amateur, he's the one that brings a knife to a gunfight. 
they cause havoc, they ride through buildings and whatnot. There's humor placed in the right places, like that student asks him about questioning about school and whatnot. Him and Shia LaBeouf trying to get out, that was a hilarious scene. Then, you know, they have to connect everything together, and turns out, guess what? This is his son, because Miri comes back. It was cool to see her come back, it really was, but it was like, a, oh yeah, I guess they're just kind of reuniting everyone, because why not, right? Which begs the question why they even made this film, because if nobody had an idea what to do with this film, why was it even made? But, I don't know, money, I guess? But yeah, it turns out Mirren, like, told Shia LaBeouf that he had a stepfather, her real father is Indiana Jones, and they were gonna get married, but then he left a week before because he got cold feet and wanted to do adventures with his father, and so that's why, or something like that, I don't know. But it is very clear that they want to build this new Indiana Jones with Shia LaBeouf, and it wouldn't have worked. He's not a really good character at all. He's okay. I don't know if it's his fault or just the material he's given, but he kind of overacts. He gets very defensive with somebody opposing him, which is really weird, and not very good character to follow. He was teasing the hat fell off, he's gonna put it on, and then any to take his back at the wedding when Marion and Indiana Jones finally get married, but like, it's like, I don't know about this, this is not good. But luckily they didn't, this fifth one looks like it's gonna be something new. It was very clear, like, yeah, this is his son, he's gonna be the next new Indiana Jones in the series. It's like, nah, what else do I remember? Oh, the ant scene, there's just, like these large pile of ants that assumes these humans and Russians. One was both terrifying and awesome. They see these ants and they consume humans immediately. And then speaking of the CG, it's really awful in some places, like the whole driving jungle scene where there's just lines. It looks like anime line does not look good, you know? It's like, are you doing this? The whole trooper agent guy that betrays Cape Blanchett and the Indy and then Cape Blanchett again. Why was that there? No idea. It feels like nobody knew what they were doing in this film. Just kind of like, this is do random stuff. Why not? The bickering between Indy and Marion. I guess it kind of works, but it's okay. It's fine. Like, they try to make it funny and it is fun, but it's like, I don't want to see two characters and old couple kind of bicker. It's, ah, uh, I don't really need that. So that was there as well. It hey, whatever. And then by the end, all the Russians die. Maybe not all of them, but like, Jet dies in her army because she looks into this alien and an actual alien image shows up. Like, what is this film? It's like, okay, a green alien looking thing. And nobody gets the artifact because it is too dangerous. It's too powerful. And then Mary and Indy, they have their wedding. Finally, there's that tease of Shia LaBeouf. It ain't never gonna happen. And then credits roll. And then that's how the fourth film ends. On a complete whimper in a way that needs a fifth film, I guess. But yeah, I don't hate this film. Like, it's okay. It does nothing for me. I can see someone who's a big fan of this franchise being like, I don't like this film. Completely dumb. I get it. But Indiana Jones and the Kingdom Crystal Skull. I couldn't even say the title. It's alright. It's a deflating sort of movie. Ends on a whimper. Kind of it for 40 years later on Raiders of the Lost Art and the series and franchise. Again, just something different for me to talk about and do. I won't do these all the time because it's long. The editing is probably gonna take a while. I'm like 40 minutes right now. I'm like 30 minutes. I don't know. Something like that. But yeah, this was fun to do. And it was fun going through this series. The fourth one's the only one I don't like. I like the other three fun adventures. So that's it for me. This has been The Road So Far. And